Twelve years ago, I had an encounter with comedian Theo Vaughn that still makes me cringe so hard I could power a small city. It wasn't a meat cute, it wasn't even a meat awkward. It was a full-blown meat mortifying. Picture it's sunny Santa Monica, the year 2012. I was a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed intern at Comedy Central, convinced I was about to witness comedic history in the making. Little did I know, I was about to comedic history, albeit the kind that gets whispered about in hushed tones at intern orientation. This is the story of how I, a self-proclaimed comedy enthusiast, managed to completely fumble an interaction with one of the funniest people on the planet. Buckle up, kids. It's about to get awkward. Being a Comedy Central intern was everything I hoped it would be. Chaotic, hilarious and fueled by an alarming amount of caffeine. The office was a whirlwind of activity with interns buzzing around like bees in a hive, each one trying to make their mark in the world of comedy. My days were a whirlwind of fetching coffee, sorting headshots that would likely never see the light of day and trying to blend in seamlessly with the comedy geniuses who roamed the halls. Every day was a new adventure filled with the kind of tasks that seemed mundane but were essential to the smooth running of the office. One of my most important duties, or at least the one I took most seriously, was escorting talent from the lobby to their meetings. It was a task that required a certain level of finesse and discretion, as these were often high-profile individuals who valued their privacy. It was a simple task, but one that came with a strict set of rules. No talking unless spoken to, no asking for autographs, and no asking for selfies. These rules were drilled into us from day one, and breaking them was considered a cardinal sin. Basically, we interns were to be invisible, inaudible, and utterly unobtrusive. Easy enough, right? Wrong. The pressure to remain unnoticed while still being efficient was immense and it often felt like walking a tightrope. Because on this particular day, the talent I was tasked with escorting was none other than Theo Vaughn, the Louisiana-born comedian with a drawl so thick you could spread it on toast. His presence was larger than life and the thought of interacting with him was both thrilling and terrifying. And I, dear reader, was about to have a major meltdown. The weight of the responsibility combined with my own nerves was almost too much to bear. I could feel the sweat starting to form on my brow as I was prepared to meet him, hoping against hope that I wouldn't make a fool of myself. Theo Vaughn, even back then, was a comedic force to be reckoned with. He had this effortless charm, a way of telling stories that made you feel like you were right there in the sticky heat of the Louisiana Bayou with him. He was hilarious, but also incredibly down to earth, which just made him even more intimidating to a neurotic intern like myself. As I walked towards the lobby, my heart hammered in my chest like a woodpecker on a caffeine bender. I ran through the plan in my head, smile politely, make eye contact, but not too much. And for the love of all that is holy, say anything stupid. But the universe, it seemed, had other plans. Plans that involved me making a complete and utter fool of myself. We exchanged pleasantries in the lobby, me a nervous squeak, him his signature southern drawl, and I led him through the labyrinthine hallways of Comedy Central. He was even taller than I expected, which only added to my already considerable nervousness. We finally reached his destination, a nondescript conference room with a whiteboard that had definitely seen better days. Can I get you anything? I asked, my voice wobbling precariously. Water? Coffee? A copy? He replied, easily leaning against the doorframe. Now, dear reader, I realize that in most situations this would have been a perfectly normal request, but remember, this was Theo Vaughn, a man whose accent could make a dictionary sound like a foreign language. And me, being the overthinking, overachieving intern that I was, completely misinterpreted his request. A copy? I repeated, my brow furrowing. Of what? A copy, he said again, a hint of amusement flickering in his eyes. You know, the thing you drink. But my brain, in all its infinite wisdom, had latched onto the word copy and refused to let go. Like a photocopy, I stammered, already mentally scanning the room for a copier. I can make one for you, sure. What do you need copied? The look on Theo's face was a mixture of confusion and amusement. It was at that moment, dear reader, that I realized the depths of my own idiocy. He wasn't asking for a photocopy, he was asking for coffee, the thing people drink, the thing I'd offered him mere seconds earlier. 
I won't bore you with the details of how I extricated myself from that situation. It involved a lot of stammering and a hasty retreat to the intern dungeon, aka the supply closet. But suffice it to say, I didn't exactly make the best first impression. Twelve years have passed since that fateful encounter, and yet the memory of my epic coffee fail still lingers like the faint aroma of burnt popcorn. It's a story I've told countless times, each retelling punctuated by groans and second-hand embarrassment from my friends. The worst part? Teovon's career has skyrocketed since then. He's got a wildly successful podcast, he's constantly selling out theatres, and he's basically living the comedian dream. Me, I'm still trying to live down the time I offered to photocopy a cup of coffee. Teo, if by some miracle you're reading this, I just want to say, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for mistaking your request for coffee as a desperate plea for a photocopy. I'm sorry for making you question the intelligence of Comedy Central interns everywhere. And most of all, I'm sorry for not getting you your damn coffee sooner. You were a good sport about it then, and I'm sure you've gotten a good laugh out of it over the years. And hey, at least it makes for a good story, right? Maybe one day our paths will cross again, and when they do, the first cup of coffee is on me. I promise I'll get the order right this time. At section 8. Embrace the cringe your turn to share. Now, dear reader, it's your turn. We've all had those moments, those cringe-worthy encounters that make us want to crawl under a rock and live out the rest of our days as hermits. But there's something to be said for embracing the cringe, for finding the humour in our own awkwardness. So tell me, what's your most embarrassing moment? Was it a public speaking disaster? A disastrous first date? A case of mistaken identity involving a celebrity and a rogue banana peel? Okay, maybe that last one was just me. Share your stories in the comments below. Let's revel in the awkwardness together. Section 9, from intern to almost functional adult. Looking back on that cringe-worthy encounter, I can't help but laugh through the residual embarrassment, of course. It was one of those moments that felt like the end of the world at the time, but now it's just a funny story to tell. It was a reminder that even in the the most intimidating of situations. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just laugh at yourself. Laughter has a way of diffusing tension and, and making even the most awkward moments bearable. I learned a lot during my time as a Comedy Central intern. It wasn't just about the work, it was about understanding the culture, the people and the unique environment that makes the entertainment industry so dynamic. I learned how to navigate the often chaotic world of entertainment where Deadlines are tight and the pressure is high. It was a crash course in multitasking and staying calm under pressure. I learned the importance of always having a backup Sharpie on hand because you never know when you'll need to jot down a brilliant idea or make a quick note. And I learned that even the most successful comedians are just regular people who appreciate a good cup of coffee. They have their quirks and routines just like the rest of us. But most importantly, I learned that it's okay to make mistakes. Mistakes are part of the learning process and they help you grow. It's okay to be awkward. Awkwardness is a sign that, that you're stepping out of your comfort zone and trying something new. It's okay to be the intern who accidentally offers to photocopy a beverage. These moments, while embarrassing at the time, become the stories you laugh about later. Because at the end of the day, it's those cringe-worthy moments that make us human. They remind us that we're all just trying to figure things out, one awkward step at a time. Section 10, life lessons from a coffee catastrophe. So what can we glean from this tale of coffee-related confusion? A few things, actually. One. Don't be afraid to laugh at yourself. When you spill that coffee, it's not the end of the world. Life is too short to take yourself too seriously. Embrace the little mishaps. Embrace the cringe. Find the humor in your mistakes. And let those moments be a source of joy rather than embarrassment. Remember that even the most embarrassing moments can make for great stories later on. Two, communication is key. Sometimes misunderstandings happen. It's important to communicate clearly, especially when things go awry. Ask for clarification when you need it, and don't hesitate to repeat yourself if necessary. Never be afraid to say, wait, did you just ask me to photocopy a cup of coffee? It's better to clarify than to assume. Three, coffee is a gift. It's more than just a beverage. Seriously, never underestimate the power of a good cup of coffee. It can be a moment of peace in a hectic day. It can fuel your dreams, soothe your soul, and provide a much needed break and apparently even inspire awkward encounters with famous comedians. Who knew coffee could be so versatile? 
And finally, if you ever find yourself face to face with Theo Vaughn, or any celebrity for that matter, do yourself a favor and just hand them a cup of coffee. It's a universal gesture of goodwill. Trust me on this one. A simple cup of coffee can open doors and create connections you never thought possible. Section 11. In conclusion, laughter is the best medicine, even when it's at my expense. Life is a series of awkward moments, strung together by fleeting moments of grace and the occasional perfectly brewed cup of coffee. It's up to us to find the humor in the chaos, to embrace the cringe, and to remember that even the most embarrassing moments can teach us valuable lessons.